Olá a todos, vou nem imaginar agora a minha vida se falar. O meu nome é Pedro Carvalho. Uh, and vou falar, esta talk vai ser em inglês, espero que não se importem. Por isso, uh, thank you everybody for coming. And this talk is about uh, grid branching. And if you already made at least a commit, you know this is going to be really useful for you. So, um, this is going to be really fast. So, if you have questions like the other ones, come to me after. I'm going to talk briefly what they are and why you need them. And uh, then I'll go to my preferred one and how I use it in on real life examples. And, uh, so, uh, Grid, grid branching strategies are uh, models to organize your commits and how you should organize the, the way you merge them. And uh, you use them if you have to work with other teammates, if you want to organize releases, if you have staging environments that you need to deploy. And uh, for me, even when I work alone, I, I still use them because it's a way to organize all the process and you can uh, solidify these concepts. So there are three main strategies, Git flow, GitHub flow, and Git lab flow. And uh, even though they're named like that, they don't need to use on the platform, you can use whenever you, you need them. Git flow creates two long lasting branches, develop and main. This is the only long lasting branches that you need. And the develop is the source of truth, meaning you only start new branches from here. So if you have working on a feature, you start from develop. If you work on a release, you always start from develop. And main should always be have should always have production ready code to be deployed. And uh, there's a, another set of uh, branches, the temporary branches. Uh, this one is the feature. There you can name it whatever you want. Fix slash. Uh, maintenance slash whatever you need, all flows use this concept of having a particular branch to create new code. Uh, there's a, another temporary branch, the release, like release one, two, three. So after you branch from develop, you create a release and then you merge back to main. Uh, there's another concept, the hotfix, where you Potentially, you would branch from main, correctly fix something on production and merge it back. I personally don't like to merge anything directly to main, because it just leads to more bugs. I always go through the pipeline. This flow is really good if you have versioning, or if you, uh, if you need a, a production branch that is really stable, because it's a really long development cycle, and because of that, it's not ideal to use uh, continuous, continuous integration and continuous delivery. GitHub flow, and it's more simple because there's a, a lot of um, redundancy, uh, a lot of redundancy if you, don't, if you don't have versioning, if you don't have production, there's a lot of branches that you don't need, if you don't need hotfix, there's a lot of things that have complexity to it. So, GitHub flow, GitHub flow, and uh, only has one major branch, the long-lasting branch is always the main or develop or whatever you want to call it, and this branch is always deployable. So it means all the code that ends up here needs to be first uh, tested for by everybody in all processes and get all the feedback before it ends in in the main branch, otherwise it will end up in production and it's going to have bugs happening. And because this is a really fast iteration cycle, um, it's ideal for continuous delivery or CI. And uh, GitHub flow picks on the, the strengths of these, back, these other two and adds a lot of more stuff. And uh, the main difference is that it has uh, branches for uh, deployment environments, staging, pre-prod, production, and uh, as the other ones, there's only one main uh, branch, develop or main slash. And um, you can tailor, 
either of these models, you, you don't have to focus on, oh, I only believe in this one. If you don't have releases or if you don't have deployment environments, you can uh, simplify them and just work whatever you need. So this is just a, a model to help you organize things. And uh, GitLab flow is a bit more complex because it has the same inner feedback loop that we saw on GitHub flow, but now it has more feedback coming from uh, the auto, like from visitors from your site, other metrics, performance, whatever. So uh, it's much more than just commits and code. Um, I was just saying the inner loop is really similar to GitHub flow, it just has more checks and ideally this is where uh, all the testing happens, all the security issues are fixed, all the approvals from uh, QA and everything happens here. So how do, how do I, I use this in my current, on my previous work? Uh, I used to work in Arte and we had three main development branches, staging, pre-prod and production. Uh, staging was mostly for us developers where you can just send PRs, send the pull requests to uh, staging, test your things, iron out all the bugs, uh, make sure the, the, the thing you're working is fully completed and um, and you can test with live data, you can test, uh, you have to pass all the automated tests to get there. So by the end, when, the, when this whole process was done, it should have go, go to the next step that will be pre-prod. And this, this, this feedback loop was really important for us developers because we can see early on if we made some mistake, if we needed to fix some bugs in our features, and because it's before it just gets to production, there's a lot of tests and feedback and green lights from everybody. We would uh, reset staging out very frequently and feed it with live data. So if you, other people were working on other features and needed to send to staging, they always have fresh data and barely any conflicts. So I was saying, if everything goes well, then it's the time to go to pre-prod, where now we're going to bother QA and product managers and all, every other people involved on the ticket. So right now, your code is really polished, right? So, uh, and if they agree, then it'll be the turn to go back to send it to prod and, or to a release branches. We, we work with a lot of versioning, so we would even send all the merge features in the release branch back to pre-prod, test everything together to make sure that the release, <laughs> the, release the release was really well tested all together and then it will send to production. Uh, this is like when I, I all, my, all my hot fixes, I would prefer to go to all this pipeline. I know like sometimes it take 10, 15 minutes to, to have a hot fix, but otherwise uh, like it's easy to forget something and uh, make sure everybody has the green light so you can just make sure your hot fix is not another bug. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, having a release branch is really important for us because we could just pick things that were ready to go to production. So there were a little subset of features that were happening and had to play well together. If we had just one big thing happening and everybody was merging, we would, we would uh, have more conflicts. And if we just have a little subset for releases, that is ideal. So there will always be someone taking care of the release. So that will be like a team lead or a release lead that was responsible to fix different people's features or fixes come together because that person knows why they're doing it instead of having the developer that just made the second commit to something fix the other person because that other person probably doesn't know what's happening beforehand. 
And uh, after some time, this is the outer feedback loop. When it's in production, you will have a lot of uh, feedback coming from customers, visitors, all the different metrics from performance. And uh, if everything was okay, we would uh, get green lights from the product manager and only then it would be merged back to develop our, our main branch. And uh, by now, there's of course a lot of things already happening on the pipeline. So the devil needs to be merged back into the features or releases branches in this loop. Okay. <laughs> 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 <laughs>